Hello friends, I'm Mia and I'm Sasha and this is the Drawing Club Podcast. So welcome to this week's episode. Yes, welcome. What are we talking about today? Uh, Today we're talking about markets, conventions and all kinds of events where you can sell your art face to face. Yes, which is really exciting because most of our uh, like creative uh, freelance life is not meeting people face to face. So these are like wonderful chances to get to yeah. do that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But let's first uh, yes. talk about what we are drawing today. Yes. Do you want to tell us first? Yes. Uh, I made this sketch. Um, a while ago when I was at my in-law's place and my partner went to the sauna <laughs> with his father and I was just like sitting there and I was like, oh, I'm going to sketch something for the podcast. And yeah, since they were in the sauna <laughs> and we were like talking about the sauna, I, I sketched all these little things that uh, that have to do with the sauna. So mm. there's like a bucket and like, a, what is it, like a branch yeah, I have no idea like what you the birch birch branches. Yeah, the that thing you hit the other person <laughs> with <laughs> when you're in the sauna. Yeah, and then I have all these little like shampoo bottles and like all this little stuff that yeah. has to do with the sauna. That's so so cute. it's just this little setting that I'm gonna paint, and I'm gonna use gouache today. I have these premixed colors that I've already used like a couple episodes ago, so I'm gonna continue with these. So nice. what about you? Well, I actually did an illustration that has to do with the topic. Wow. <laughs> Good job. My, no. my has like nothing whatsoever. <laughs> oh my God, I didn't mean that. I was like, okay, no, no, you. No, no. <laughs> I, just, I just thought about it. I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> this has nothing to do with the topic. But yeah, yeah. yeah I was inspired by our topic today. Yeah. And I made this uh, drawing of myself selling um, pictures of myself because <laughs> that's something funny that a lot of people tell me. It's yeah. like, oh, these all look like you when they see my <laughs> me surrounded by my drawings so I kind of am making a joke of that and just drawing myself like surrounded by self-portraits of me mm-hmm. and above me it says I'm an artist because yeah. it's funny <laughs> I mean I am <laughs> it's true I it's am. funny because it's true yeah. <laughs> and I am using markers today Yes. And we are in my home today. Yes. So exciting. you might hear sounds of cats on the background. Yeah. <laughs> so don't mind them. And you might hear some other sounds that don't, don't sound like cats, but that's cats. <laughs> they just like have been now because we've been preparing for this. They've gone all um, excited and they've been like running around and climbing the curtains and stuff. So, <laughs> yeah. so they might make wild. Like, yeah, <laughs> they might make some wild sounds, but I think they should calm down. But Mm-hmm. I'm kind of hoping they'll come and greet us. Yeah. So if you're watching, uh, you might see cats. Yeah, let's Who see. Knows? Yeah, that would be nice. I hope they don't <laughs> climb curtains, but just come here or something. Yes. But you never know with cats what they want to do <laughs> next. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But nice. let's get into it then. Yes. So uh, I think we could start by talking about the kinds of places we have sold our art at. And we kind of have some different experiences mm-hmm. and some similar ones because we've also done that together a bunch of times. Yes. But, um, well, you've been doing it for longer than me, so do you want to like start with your, like how did you, like how was your first convention or how did you like start selling your art? Yeah, so I think the first time I was selling my art face to face was, um, yeah, I think like soon after I started my Etsy shop, I was still selling a bunch of like random stuff. I was binding books, but oh yeah, now they're kissing. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm going to get distracted with cats also because uh, there are two of them. So sometimes they fight. Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> please don't fight. <laughs> don't. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So soon after, yeah, so I started my, oh my god, I'm going to get so distracted. (laughs) It's fine, it's all good. (laughs) Yeah, so I was selling all kinds of random stuff. I was selling my hand-bound books, but also I was like knitting some stuff. And maybe like for Christmas, I did some like 
Christmas ornaments and I was just trying things out. I was trying everything out and I was doing a lot of this recycled paper things. So yeah, I would make like books out of recycled paper, but also sometimes like some other random small things like some little banners for like home decor and yeah. So I think the first market I went to was at a library, like in Kallio library. And it was this like really tiny thing and the table costed like 10 euros. And I, I shared that table with my friend Xenia. <laughs> and the table was like this tiny round table no. <laughs> and we both had our stuff there so it was like really tight and really small and they were like the whole market was like really small there were maybe like 10 sellers oh. and there weren't th that many people um coming so i just wanted to try it and i just picked like the cheapest uh thing you could apply to when was this Do you uh. remember like or around Let's see. I was still in university, I think. Mm -hmm. So maybe 20, 2010, 20. Oh, wow. 12. Oh, you've been doing it a long time. Yeah, yeah. But that was like before I even like started my own business. It was mm. just this really small yeah. stuff. So for a while, I was just doing those like really small, really cheap kind of markets organized by some like small organization and like i i pretty much sold like almost nothing there <laughs> but because they were also like not very well promoted and share sure. in some like really random places like once this market was in the like in the basement of some record shop or like something oh, wow. very random <laughs> or then in some bar mm. where like during the daytime where nobody came to the bar yeah yeah but it was really nice to like try it out and see because also like my display didn't really like look like anything i would just like bring my products and put them on the table yeah. i didn't really like think of how to display them but then i would like kind of try it and see and then try new things so i think that was like a very good way to start yeah. because a very low pressure uh, environment so i could actually like learn on my mistakes and stuff but also they were a bit discouraging because i didn't really sell much yeah yeah and then i think after a while of selling on those i started trying to look for like bigger markets yeah and i i and also my like my product line was kind of developing and actually started looking like a product line <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not just a bunch of random stuff so I think, yeah, kind of gradually I was trying different things and I kind of started going to those design markets. So I have like the most experience, I think, with design markets. Yeah. Because that's what even like in the beginning, that's what I was aiming for. And then that's what I was mostly doing. Yeah. That's what I'm like mostly familiar with. Yeah. Nowadays. For me, it's very, or I mean, not very different, but it's a bit different. Yeah. <laughs> um, so my first um, market was actually the Helsinki Comics Festival, and it was in 2017. Mm -hmm. Yes. So three years ago. Yeah. Yeah. And I, yeah, I had just... Or, yeah, I had not even started my business, but I was, like, in the process of doing that. So I had, like, done a few commissions and... Uh, but, yeah, I, I didn't even sell my art online yet, yeah. like, properly. And my friend uh, asked me if I wanted to split uh, a table with them. Actually, like, like with two other people. Uh, so then the three of us went and... Also for my friend, it was their first time, mm -hmm. uh, and they had made, I think, like some comic. I didn't even have anything, like any comics. I, I just had like maybe three different prints and four stickers, like Twin Peaks stickers, mm -hmm. and like, uh, and also like something like four or five postcard designs or something. Like it was tiny. Um, but it was a lot of fun and yeah like definitely the fact that i wasn't alone made it like not as scary but i was still like really scared because i had no idea what i was kind of going into mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah 
But for me, it was like really fun. And also that event was like very cheap. I think the table was, could it maybe have been like 20 and we split it three ways. Yeah. Oh yeah. So, uh, and that's like a very busy festival. So I actually got very encouraged by that <laughs> experience, <laughs> which was really nice yeah. <laughs> for our first event. But yeah, like, um, I've done a few comics festivals since. I've done the Helsinki Comics Festival like three times now. And it's like one of my favorites. Um, it's so like very low key and very DIY. And there's like a lot of um, like, how do you say, like activist stuff and like activist art and like queer stuff there. And like it just feels like there are so many different voices and everyone's mm -hmm. like doing their thing and it's like pretty like small for everyone kind of but it's like something they're really passionate about and the people also who visit are like so like from all kinds of different walks of life and yeah um it's really nice it's like one of the most laid back and like fun places i've sold i really enjoy it every time yeah yeah, I think it's interesting how for us both it's been like the opposite of how we also see ourselves inside this kind yeah. of places because yeah, I've always like uh felt like I need to put my stuff in those design markets and since mm. that's where I've like I'm familiar with that, like I see myself inside that mm -hmm. and I always wanted to also take part in those kind of like comic festivals yeah. but I've always been very uh like I, I kind of don't see myself cool enough to be like part of that or something I feel like yeah because there's a lot of this activist art mm. and this co like the comics and <laughs> uh, they know that we are recording a podcast so they're like how can we make the most <laughs> amount of noise we can <laughs> yeah. yeah so I always like oh I'm not cool enough to be like part of that kind of thing and I think wow. for you it's the opposite <laughs> yeah for me like design markets seemed so scary like I feel like oh my thing is just you know it's just something I do it's not that professional I just draw cute things like People at design markets have like, ooh, I made this wooden bench and I have it in five colors and that's my thing and it's this cool design thing and I'm like, yeah, I just draw cute girls <laughs> and I, like I I was so scared to do my first design market which um, I mean since I've also like done a few and we've mm. done some of those together which has been like very nice and way less scary than than going like by myself mm. but yeah that's so interesting because for me this comic festival seemed like this um yeah seems like this oh it's like er anyone can do this like it's like so um uh, yeah it it's like so <laughs> and I, I don't know accepting of all different kinds of things and like yeah a lot there's a lot of people who it's like not their job it's just yeah. something they like are passionate about or enjoy doing and that's interesting that to you that seems like intimidating <laughs> yeah yeah I guess even not because yeah I, I I mean design markets also seem intimidating for me in terms of like being a professional mm. but I always felt like maybe that's what I need to like strive for mm. uh, like to like, succeed you have to yeah like, yeah mm. yeah and then yeah I would also always see all these products that other people sell and like yeah this people have like such a uh, minimal range and mm. I just have everything I have like stickers and I have earrings and I have pins and I have this yeah, and that yeah, and then yeah. I'm like are people really confused because usually like yeah a mm. person would do this one thing in like three colors and it's super expensive and that's all they sell yeah. and then you ask them like oh how has your market been oh really good really good I sold like a bunch of these thousand yeah. euro <laughs> <laughs> benches wow <laughs> I'm like, well, should I get into benches <laughs> yeah yeah and it's like okay I don't know for me it's kind of okay I'm selling this <laughs> five euro sticker sets <laughs> yeah. but I haven't sold that many <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah so I guess but I mean, for me, it's also been different. Some some design markets have been really good for me. Yeah. But yeah, not all of them. Yeah. But yeah, so actually now that we started mm -hmm. talking about like 
which markets have been yeah how far like how has your experience been with different markets like have you felt like with some of them it was worth it and with some mm. of them it wasn't and like did you notice that it depends on something or sure yeah i've i've had like varied um uh, experiences <laughs> but yeah. i think uh Yeah, you're checking. Yeah, something. I'm just ch- checking the time because I didn't put it on my phone. Oh, okay. Usually, I I put a time because our camera switches off after half an hour. Yeah. But actually, we can see the time in this camera. So okay, perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yes, some markets. I think it it has a lot for me to do with the size of the market. Mm-hmm. So I've gone to this really nice comics festival. It's called Ofest. It's in Porvo, this really small town in mm-hmm. Finland. I went there one year. I, I was still pretty much like starting out also at the time, so I didn't have as much variety with my stuff as I do now, but still like that was like very quiet and small just because it's in this small town and it's like a small festival. Mm-hmm. But um yeah. But then I actually have noticed like with these huge, huge design um design markets And then, like, something like this comic festival, which is also, like, there's a lot of people coming. I, it's pretty much the same. But the big difference is the cost of the table. Yeah. <laughs> and that is, like, a huge difference. So it is a lot more, like, better for me uh, at these comic festivals than at the design markets. Because I might end up selling around the same amount, but the table fares are, like, astronomical compared to comic festivals in yeah. these design places yeah which i i think we should be like we could be transparent and talk about the pricing because i think it's like overwhelming for businesses our size and yeah like because we sell illustrations Mm -hmm. and that means most of our products are like under 10 euro for sure Mm -hmm. so uh these market tables can cost like three to four hundred euros yeah which even more yeah even more i've paid also more for yeah for like the the Helsinki Design Week design market that is even more expensive so those are like huge there are like there's a lot of people but yeah there are a lot of these brands that maybe it's easier for them to afford it because they're selling these 1000 euro stools or something Mm -hmm. but uh, it's very different for us and then something like comics festivals they're usually pretty affordable and cost like I don't know, like 10 to 30 euros, which is like, <laughs> yeah, it's pretty amazing uh, and makes it a lot more approachable, like also to start out with if you're not quite sure. And there's even some free like conventions like in Finland. Yeah. Uh, I just went to this one called Kibekon and it was at the at a library. So it was actually free. You could get a table for free. So that mm-hmm. was like amazing. So if you would be like starting out, something like that would be perfect to try. Yeah. Just try selling your stuff. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, even though I've had like very nice experiences at design markets, I'm kind of thinking <laughs> they, they're they a bit like um, they're not like my place perfectly. Um And I might do some like at at around Christmas because then I know that the sales will be good, but they're not always worth it for me, like with all the trouble that goes into them as well. And like all the preparations and stuff. Yeah. And I guess we could like maybe, should we talk about like some of the things that go into preparing for markets? Because that's for me is like a lot of work is yeah. done like before a market. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted. Yeah, we should yes. do that. But I just wanted to mention, yeah, also that like I, yes. like about the design markets versus. I mean, I haven't mm. been to that many like conventions or comic. F- I mean, I have actually. I haven't sold at a comic festival ever. No, we did. Oh, we did. At Tampere, Kupli. We yeah. went together. Okay, so yeah, that I was kind of thinking of it as a convention, but I guess it was a. It's a comic, comic festival. festival. Yeah, so it's a, it was something somewhere like that. in between. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so that one, yeah, I was like, I remember that one. So mm. that was like the only uh, experience I had with mm. kind of more, yeah, this cheaper comic uh, fan art mm. kind of convention type of setting. And it was really nice. I really mm. enjoyed it. And I don't actually remember like how much we made if it yeah. was even like 
business wise it was worth it yeah but it wasn't like super amazing but we did get profit yeah <laughs> but it was like yeah it felt much less pressure uh-huh. and much more kind of uh relaxed atmosphere and yeah. like very not like you don't have so much pressure to be very professional and to be a brand and yeah it's more yeah. like an there are these artists who do all this cute stuff (laughs) selling that stuff so that was really nice and for me also like even though I've been uh, selling at design markets mostly nowadays I've been recently actually thinking that I should kind of maybe like release myself from that pressure Mm -hmm. that I need to be a brand and that I need to be with all those high-end brands Mm -hmm. because actually like last year I finally got into this Helsinki Design Week design market which mm-hmm. is like the biggest design market in Helsinki mm-hmm. and that was, that has been like my goal for several years mm. and it's like they don't actually accept everyone and yeah. it's also very expensive so first of all you need to get in and second of all you need to afford it yeah. and like in 2019 I finally managed to do both Act- well actually I split the, <laughs> the booth with another designer but even but that still, even yeah. that is expensive so I was like at first like oh my god this is like so cool I can afford it and I can and they accepted me that's amazing but then when I was selling there I was like yeah I don't know I don't know why I was so hung up on like mm. being in that market maybe it's like you kind of think that you need to be at a certain status oh, I kicked the mic I'm sorry <laughs> not kicked but uh, I touched the wow, mic wow you're flexible <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, yeah I need to learn to not do that um yeah, this is like a whole new setting for us. So no, yeah. <laughs> no, yeah. Anyways, oh my god, I get so distracted today. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> yes. So I think I had this pressure that I need to to be a successful designer. I need to be next to all the other amazing designers mm. at this uh, biggest design market. Mm-hmm. And then when I was there, I was like, why did I? Why did I think I need to be here? Like these people are not I don't feel like they're my people like the Mm. people who were shopping there I don't like they're not bad people but like these big design markets are like where those big brands go to sell so they also sometimes those same products are sold in like in those like I don't know furniture design stores and yeah 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 they're like way bigger brands like they yeah so I was like, I, I don't actually think I have exactly the same customer as those mm-hmm. brands. And I mean, it's good, of course, to like try these things out. I'm I'm not... Uh, what is the word? Like, I don't regret that mm. I went to this market. It's like, it's good that I saw how it works and like who are the people who go there and who are the people who sell there. But now I'm like, yeah, I don't know. Actually, I don't want to go there again. Like, yeah. I I I did make profit, but actually I didn't sell like as much as I was hoping to, and and I didn't even like I felt kind of out of place with my products, mm. and I was like, yeah, I actually I would rather like go to a comics festival. Yeah, because that was at the same time <laughs> yeah, I was selling yeah, at the yeah, that's yeah, comics was, festival. Yeah. I was yeah. like, yeah, next year I'm actually gonna do that instead of this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I mean, yeah, I enjoy some of the like Christmas design markets. Yeah, same. Those are nice, and uh, yeah, I've some of them have been like very successful for me. But yeah, like the. I'm I'm not I don't anymore think that the more expensive and prestigious a design market is like the the better mm. it is for me or like everyone to get in. It's yeah. like it depends on your products and on your customers. Yeah. So actually it doesn't have like I don't think I have to strive for those huge expensive <laughs> yeah, <laughs> prestigious yeah, yeah. markets yeah. actually it, it's more important to find the one that works for you yeah but it's so i think it's so easy to kind of think that because mm-hmm. it kind of has this thing like okay so you have to be kind of successful already to like even be able to afford this yeah so like it like if people actually take this kind of this risk and pay that it must mean that the, like this is a very profitable yeah thing but it, that might not be the case. Like some companies and some brands and some 
people <laughs> just have like way more resources and they can take a loss whereas maybe for yeah. like uh companies and people our size <laughs> yeah <laughs> financially we like for us it's much more devastating if we pay like several hundreds and then like lose money or like kind of are like uh not much better off afterwards yeah. so yeah, exactly. it's like a lot bigger loss yeah and also mentally yeah it's really disappointing like when it happens <laughs> Yeah, but also, okay, before yes. <laughs> before we go into preparation, one other thing that I thought it's still like, mm-hmm. again, like if you are thinking to whether you should do a market or not, sure. it also doesn't have to be, again, only like financial profit, because in some markets, yeah. there is like a lot of other things that are very like nice or very mm-hmm. useful that you can get. Like some markets are very like open to the media so you might get some exposure Mm. or whatever and uh, like i i actually got some retailer from a market once like Mm, somebody came and saw my products and then they wanted to sell yeah so that like you might not find unless so there might be this profit in the future that like like some money in the future that you might get from it and then also for me the markets like one of the huge and like very important part of the markets is meeting other um, designers and illustrators that is like so nice for me and sometimes sometimes the market would not go very well financially but I would still have this amazing feeling that I like I feel part of the community because when you're online it's kind of like the community is so big that it's sometimes like you're not sure if you're a part of it or not but yeah at markets like Especially nowadays, I used to be like very shy and not talk to anyone. But now I kind of make myself talk at, at least to like some people. Yeah. And it's so nice to yes. like meet them face to face. And it's like, oh, these are people that do the same thing that I do. And like, and then we can actually like talk about this market and like uh, small business in general. And you feel yeah. understood. And it's that's very nice. Yeah, that's really true. Like, yeah, I agree. I really love that part. So the best thing, actually, for me is seeing you guys at the markets. Yeah. (laughs) That's my favorite. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Because it's like, it's a totally different thing to hear or like to see on Instagram that people liked my illustration than to like actually see people interacting with my art and like maybe they're with a friend and they're like saying like oh look at this this is so cute or that's like my favorite thing it's so rewarding to hear like yeah to hear how people get happy about it and like find things that they can relate to yeah I know, same. Yeah, I love that too. And I love when people sometimes like see themselves in the illustrations. Like I would have this plant lady illustrations and some like lady would come and like look at it. I was like, oh, this is me. This is me. And like tell me about the plants they have. And like it's it's so cute when people, when you see people connect. Yes. uh, Like so quickly and like very like get really excited and yes. yeah and then it gets you excited too yeah and uh, and like yeah Be- because when on when people order online it's like of course very nice and sometimes they will write some message with the order but most of it like you just get a order and mm. an address and you don't really like know like why people decided to order from you or like who are those yeah. people and of course it still like uh, feels very nice that they wanted to buy from you yeah but there is like this whole other level when you see them react to your art face to face yes yeah it's so nice (laughs) but yeah should we then go into uh what goes into preparation for uh yes face face to face selling event yes and i think for us uh, a lot of this is quite different. Uh, well, nowadays, it's more <laughs> similar. Okay, why am I talking this vaguely? Anyway. <laughs> yeah, I don't even I know just, what you mean. <laughs> yeah, I'll just, I'll just tell you. <laughs> okay, yes, tell me. So for me, um, 
for most of my products, I actually make them at home. Oh, yeah. The only things I have like outsourced are my uh, t-shirts and tote bags and uh, I have a few like zines slash comics. So those I've had printed elsewhere, but all my cards, all my stickers, all my but prints. Also pins oh, and yeah, earrings. true. Yeah. yeah, pins and earrings, they are like um, printed and cut elsewhere, but I have to assemble yeah. them. So there's a lot of things like that I have to do by hand mm -hmm. <laughs> for a market. So it can take me like the whole previous week sometime, or maybe not the whole week, but like several days uh, of work to like finish everything that I'll need for the market, mm. which is something that people might not, or I don't know. Um, and it's also like different, of course, like if you can order all your prints from somewhere else, you don't really have to do very much <laughs> mm. to have them ready for the market. But uh, for me, it's a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For me, I have more stuff that is uh, made somewhere else. Mm -hmm. uh, I have at least po postcards I mm. get printed. Yeah. And well, nowadays I make stickers myself, but not yeah. all of them. Also, some of the stickers I actually ordered. And the things that I make by hand, the book, the handbound books, I don't sell at markets because mm. it's just like too much to make them for markets. And then I also have pins and earrings, which are made the same way as Mia's. They mm. are uh, laser cut and printed somewhere and then I assemble them yes. at home. But yeah, there is like way more products that I do like that I make at home so that part of the preparation is faster for me but there's another issue of ordering this stuff beforehand yeah. which has <laughs> failed so much <laughs> I have like so many markets where I would plan I would even like I would be really good at it I would plan a couple months in advance I would write down wow. all the products that I want to have I would make some kind of schedule and then it would never work out and like oh half of the stuff God. I planned I don't have or I have like the day after the market yes. is over it's yeah that has been actually kind of have been like trying to do more at home or then like like with pins and earrings there's mm -hmm. like at least the production time is so much smaller yeah, than with yeah, some yeah. other stuff and that they're I coming have. from close by because they're yeah. made here in Helsinki yes. so so I don't even have to like do shipping I actually like if I take my bike it's like 10 minutes to that place yeah. where they make them so yeah that has been like very nice and that has made it much easier for me because yeah I'm not very good at this beforehand mm. stuff yeah <laughs> I kind same. of like I realized too late that the market is like almost here yeah I'm like oh my god it's only two weeks and I have nothing designed and I have like nothing ordered yeah. and then I try at least the, the place where I used to make postcards uh they have been very nice I would kind of give them a deadline sometimes like if I feel that there is not enough time mm -hmm. I would actually message them like okay so I actually need these postcards by this date do you think we have enough time? And if so, when should I send you the files? Mm. And then they would tell me. And then I would try, like, if it's possible, I would try to make it before the deadline. And they also were, like, really nice to make sure I actually got them exactly on the day. Because mm. they had some, I, I don't know, like, the the courier contract they had. They was also, I guess, very good. <laughs> because Aww. they could actually make sure it comes to me yeah like on an exact date and it always came exactly when they told me it would so is it because you wanted to like have new designs at the market yeah yeah for yeah. example or if i run out of some design mm. and i would want right. it to have i would want to have it at the market yeah so like in that way, I always feel like, oh, I wish I actually made everything at home because mm. then it would at least like even if I would have to work for like 24 hours nonstop on the yeah. last day, at least like I can still somewhat control it. Yeah, but I feel like you kind of do. <laughs> like when, yes, <laughs> sometimes do. when we're talking like the night before, I'm because <laughs> I, ha I have like some uh, trouble sleeping sometimes before like a, an exciting day and like an early morning. I, I I can't work like until the evening so I will like try to finish in the afternoon so I have like 
the whole evening to kind of calm down and relax because otherwise I just know I won't be sleeping. But then <laughs> you'll be messaging and sometimes you'll be like, yeah, I just started <laughs> doing this and this. And then in the morning when we meet, you're like, yeah, I think I slept for like two hours. And I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> yes, <such> yes. <laughs> yes, I do doing? that. <laughs> I do that. I'm like, I'm really bad at um, kind of estimating how... Yeah. how fast I can do stuff I, because a lot of my stuff is already made I'm like oh I only need to put things in like boxes and then maybe like make some um, price tags and maybe yeah. figure out some like stands but otherwise I'm pretty much prepared but then when I like sit down to do <laughs> that actually like making every price tag and then sometimes I would need to like I don't know put for example like in my notebooks I have this strap that goes around them mm. so I would need like I would see and some of them are damaged so I need to like put a new strap on each notebook like all these things are very small but then when you put them all together it's actually yeah. loads of work and then <laughs> I would think like oh only, like I can start in the evening and in two hours I'll be all ready yeah <laughs> And I'm never, like, no. I'm never ready. It time. never works that way no, it with never. anything. Yeah. So I, I would benefit from, like, learning to actually, like, maybe not even do it on the last day. I actually have this dream that one day, the day before the market, mm. is going to be my day off. I've managed to do that once. Wow. Already. All right, like, the only thing I had to do was put everything in the suitcase, but I had, like, done all the preparations. I only had to pack, and that was a dream come true. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> because markets are pretty exhausting. Yeah. So it's, like, and, and usually, like, if you prepare for them and there's, like, a lot of work beforehand mm. and then there's a lot of work during the market it's very nice to like actually rest before yeah. the market and then go like very fresh <laughs> yeah. to to the market and like yeah so that you get some rest and not yeah because usually because i sleep for two hours before the market i come there like very tired already yeah. and then i have to do like two full days of like talking to people oh and like standing and stuff so that's yeah. like I don't recommend that strategy. No, <laughs> it's not right. <laughs> no. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like, uh, like sometimes I feel like I wish I had some of the things outsourced. But yeah, when I hear you talking about like, yeah, how much in advance you have to be like to order all that stuff and mm -hmm. to make sure it comes in early. Yeah, I'm that's not my forte. I'm not. <laughs> I'm really bad at that mm -hmm. stuff also. So I think maybe this is working out. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Like I, I get it mostly done on time. And and also nowadays I think I'm better with like uh, kind of letting some things go that I thought I would have time to like make this new thing or do that extra thing. I'm kind of like, actually, I think right now it's more important for me to like get two hours more like just relaxing time tonight yeah. uh so i'm kind of like also better at uh kind of managing my expectations or like yeah true yeah same for me <laughs> i go, also sometimes. like i like to plan a lot but then if i don't manage to do all of it it's fine yeah it's like as long as i get something and like as long as there is enough to sell to like yeah to make it worth <laughs> coming there it should be fine yeah yeah okay but based on that should we give some advice yes some market <laughs> we advice. sound we sound like we can give such amazing advice yes. you just told about how much we struggle with it yeah no, we, but really we didn't, <laughs> we didn't advertise ourselves as like market experts yeah but we can learn from our mistakes so that others don't have to exactly them. and we like we know better we just are not great at always <laughs> following our own advice <laughs> exactly yeah but i guess like the first tip should be like to prepare like well in advance especially if you're like ordering things from from any i don't know printing places and stuff like be really early with that stuff because things can get delayed, like, you, yeah, leave enough time for shipping and all that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I think like a good, I, I read somewhere, so I'm not going to take credit for this, mm -hmm. but somebody said that 
like if you try to estimate how long you need to, for example, if you want to sell these kind of postcards, mm -hmm. you estimate how much time it will take you to design them, to order them and for them to arrive. Multiply that time by two and, mm. and then like start it then. Because nice. it's always like you can estimate things, and but they're always going to take longer. Yeah. So it's good to like estimate and then multiply by two. Okay. That's a good rule. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I don't stick to it, but actually, like, I really want to. Yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> in the future. That's perfect. Yeah. Uh, then I think some things, there are, like, certain things that you might not think you will need on the day of the market, but that you really do. Like, at least for me, it's a pair of scissors. Mm -hmm. You need some tape, because you'll need to... Like, maybe tape your tablecloth to the table, or you might need to stick some price tags somewhere or whatever. Um, so that's very important. You might also need some string <laughs> to yeah. tie stuff. Uh, and, well, at least for our, like, mm, display stuff, mm -hmm. we use these kind of grid walls that you can build uh, into different configurations. But these clips are like perfect for um, displaying things on these grids. What are these clips called? Do like, they have well, a name? Well, the, the bigger ones are, I think, bulldog clips. Okay. But then there are also like all these pretty versions. Yeah. But with the same, basically even bulldog clips are fine. Okay. But thanks. anything else that is like your aesthetic and maybe, yeah, yeah, they're not paper clips. Anyway. Yeah. Clips that you can like attach like a print, for example, yeah. to some back backdrop. Yes. Uh, business cards is something that <laughs> is very easy to also forget, yes. uh, especially because I, I, I just print mine like whenever there's a market coming. Um, so I don't like I, I always have some left over, but I, I always have to print more. So if I would forget that, I wouldn't have any. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's happened to you a few times. Many times. Yeah. Most of the time I don't have uh, business cards because I forget. Yeah. Yeah, I think like last time we were selling together, I came with business cards and yeah, I, was I was so <laughs> proud of myself yeah. and you were really proud of me. <laughs> yes! It was like such a huge thing. Wow. <laughs> I was, I yeah. felt so professional. Yeah. But that's also like good for you to remem remember or like realize like even us professionals, <laughs> like you, we still forget things, but it's okay. You know, yeah. it still is all right. You still yeah. manage and... It's never as serious as it might seem in the moment. Like this one time <laughs> we went, last summer we went to sell at a Pride event. And on the oh way there, because <laughs> uh, the application had been in Finnish and, and you had done it. Uh, yeah. And you're fi like, you know, some Finnish, but it's not perfect. <laughs> Far from perfect. Yeah. <laughs> so we realized on the train in the morning that we actually don't have a table like we thought it was included yeah but it turns out there was no table so then we were like are we gonna and it, the event was at a park yeah we like okay we don't have a tablecloth or anything so we're just we can't put stuff on the grass <laughs> what's gonna happen <laughs> yeah yeah that was like a very <laughs> stressful trip for a while like on, yeah. like while we were on the train to Turku yeah. we were kind of figuring out what to do where we get yeah. a table we were like asking people we know yeah and, yeah but also we contacted the organizers and they were really nice and managed to actually get us a very small table yes. and it was it ended up being very nice so yeah, it was actually it was perfect yeah it actually worked out but yeah, but we have these things. You remember there was another market we went together when mm -hmm. I forgot a cash box. Oh, yeah. I didn't even remember Yeah, and that. I think you you were actually like, were you even selling with me or were you just coming with me? I don't mm. remember. But we were like taking this bus that was also like one hour late. Oh, so we were that's also like, like, yeah, late in Turku. Oh, it yeah. was also Turku. Oh my God, is Turku yeah. like our bad luck? <laughs> Maybe. <I> <laughs> but, but yeah, but you had some cash on you. It wasn't a oh. lot, but but we managed. Wow. It was fine. Like, yeah, I like things like that happen. So, of course, it's good to prepare. But also, like, you will always figure out if if something goes wrong, if you forget something. Yeah. There's, like, usually there is... Even, like, I forgot money. <laughs> <laughs> and still, usually there is, 
like a solution to most problems. Yeah. Unless, of course, like you forget all your products and everything and yeah. just go there on your own. I mean, you can still draw live portraits. Or yeah. Something. Yeah. So, <laughs> so actually, yeah. <laughs> still works out. <laughs> but yeah, but uh, it's good to think about everything you can think of, but also you're not always going to think of everything. There are things that are going to happen that you didn't think about, or there's mm. things that you might forget. So it's not like, you, like, you're going to be fine. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Trust us. Yes. <laughs> You'll be fine. <laughs> yeah. And then when you, like, when you are at the market and you realize you forgot something important, just keep a note on it and, like, I think it's good to have some kind of list of things you need at mm. markets and just keep adding to it. Do you have a list like no. that? Yeah, me neither. <laughs> <laughs> I just have it in my head, but yeah. it, it would actually make sense to have something like that. Also, I think like the more markets I've done, the more kind of relaxed I've become about it. And like, yeah, the more I'm like, uh, I'll, even if I forget something, it will be fine. Yeah. Which just comes like, you just know it's going to work out. You, yeah. <laughs> yeah, true. And I remember, like, I used to have these very detailed inventories that I made before every market where I actually put, like, the quantities of each individual postcard design. Like, I put everything down, and then afterwards I would count every single product and see which ones I sold. It was, like, so much work. Uh, I think it was valuable, though, at the time, because uh, I did learn, like, what, what, like, which products of mine sell, like... Mm -hmm pretty much at every market or at least like mo most often but nowadays I don't do that uh, but maybe starting out especially if you don't have like hundreds of products that might be a good thing to do to like see what works and what doesn't but also I do notice that at each market uh, each market it's kind of different things that people are maybe excited about yeah it's never quite the same. <laughs> yeah, I usually kind of keep an eye on the stock in general and then mm. see what sells better in general, like what I have less of. I yeah. never really, like, count anything. Yeah. Uh, like, I mean, I try to count what I have, like, at, at home in my studio, mm. but, like, not at markets or in shops or anything because, yeah, yeah it's always different. Yeah. But we have 10 minutes. Should we answer a question? Oh, yes. I almost forgot. <laughs> yeah. We have our first question of the week. <laughs> yes. This is a new segment that we are starting. And you can ask us questions uh, on Instagram or by emailing us anywhere yes. that works for you. But we have gotten some questions on Instagram. Yes. And I'm going to read one of them. Oh, I have my phone on airplane mode. <laughs> I haven't written down the question beforehand. Yeah, we're not prepared here. <laughs> yes. Okay, so I liked Yeah. This question. So this uh question is by Sin is a bean. <laughs> and the question is, when did you first know that you wanted to do work as an illustrator? Mm -hmm. And what was the first sign that made you realize it was possible for you to do it? And they are an inspiring illustrator. Oh, wow. Okay. Um, so I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to start by first not answering the question. Yes. But um, like I talked about in the first episode, like drawing was my favorite thing as a child. Mm -hmm. So growing up, um, I actually thought I would become an artist. I didn't know about illustration specifically, but like mm -hmm. I... I I thought that's what I, like, I want to draw for a living. But um, then that got kind of pushed away. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then, yeah, when I got, when I got back into drawing after graduating and I started, like, I found all these illustrators on YouTube and on Instagram and I kind of realized, like, all these people have just kind of, like, not all of them went to art schools. They've just decided to, like, they draw things and they make them into products. And they're just doing it just like that. <laughs> no one gave them permission. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's when I kind of, uh, like, that encouraged me a lot. That even if I don't have this education and stuff, um, I could actually do that. And... But you were also like a major part yeah. in, <laughs> in inspiring that I I could actually do this and that I want to do this. And 
I'm just gonna like <laughs> you can answer soon but uh also like the encouragement and the lovely comments that I got on Instagram from all of you when I was just starting out and I was sharing my art that was like so valuable and when people like started contacting me and asking if I do commissions so if I would like draw their portraits for them that's when I realized like oh actually like someone is willing to pay me money yeah. to create something for them so then I thought like it had maybe been a more abstract thing or something like oh maybe in three years I'll be good enough for that but then I kind of started realizing like oh so it could actually be sooner yeah <laughs> Maybe I can do this. <laughs> yeah. But basically, like, sharing your work has helped you yes. then realize it because then you saw that people want yeah. to pay money for it. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I would say, I mean, also, I, I agree with that. Mm -hmm. uh, but I would say, like, for me, it was very gradual. So I don't even mm. know, like, at which point. I, I tried, as I was like already telling, I tried so many different things uh, like that were also creative. Uh but then I kind of I kind of laid landed into illustration <laughs> like gradually from all of that. Yeah. Uh, but I would kind of say that maybe like you don't always also have to wait for a sign. No. Or like like yeah, you don't need permission. Like you don't need some kind of or like if even like as you say like when people told you that they wanted to buy from you then mm -hmm. you kind of figured it out which is like very cool but also I think like you don't need people telling you they want to buy from you to decide that you want to sell this stuff like that's true so I, I think I, I would say like I understand this like wait, waiting for a sign or when waiting for permission or kind of yeah. like that you need somebody to tell you or like or something in your life to happen to realize that you actually want it to be. But mm -hmm. I think if you're asking this question, then it could be that you actually <laughs> want it to be your job. Yes. So I think you should just try. Like, yeah. yeah, just like share your art as much as you can and like try to sell it to someone as much as you can also. Like yeah. if you can't afford like markets or shops or anything, just, I don't know, try to sell it to your friends or yeah. I, I don't know. Like, I think it's good. Because also, if you try it, you might realize you actually don't want to do this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> which I think is also trying totally is the best fine. way to yeah. like figure it out. Yeah. So like, I would say like you you don't need to wait for a sign or for permission yeah. to realize that like because if you're considering it, then I think I think you actually want it to be your job. Yeah. <laughs> I have a feeling from this Sneaky. question. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And also, yeah, these things can be gradual. You can like. Try yeah. things out and be like, oh my god, this is amazing. And then somebody maybe like wanted to buy from you and you're like, this is the best feeling in the world. I want to do more of this. Yeah. So, but yeah, you'll get it by doing it, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that was nice and encouraging. <laughs> I 100% agree. <laughs> okay, that's good. That's good. Yes. But of course, also no pressure in like taking your time and thinking about things over. So it's it's a fine line between like overthinking and actually needing to uh, take things slow. So also, you yes. know best. Yes. Trust your gut and yes. your heart. Also your brain, but I think your gut uh, yeah. knows best. Yeah. Yeah. Because <laughs> at least for me, I overthink. So sometimes that gets in the way. You yeah. can just try it out. Yeah. There's no harm. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's true. Okay, uh, we have some time to show our <laughs> work. Oh, as, yes. of, as yes. always, you <laughs> finished yours <laughs> and I'm somewhere in yes. the middle. Or Actually, I think I'm closer it's, to finish yeah, than usually. That's <laughs> true. Yeah, you've been really fast because painting is never like as fast. Um, here's my drawing. Oh, should we show it the sh you same time? here also. Oh, okay. So I can camera. show it here. Oh, yeah. It's a bit light, but maybe you can still... Again, I, I uh, hit the mic. Oh my god. I'm so sorry about this episode that there's going to be some sounds that are annoying. Yes. We are learning. But here I yes. am, an artist. <laughs> it's really cute. I love it. And I love these portraits of you. It's so cute. <laughs> yes. I still have to like line things and like Aww. it still blobs, but I I'm happy with this color palette. Yeah, it's so pretty, and the this bunch of leaves is yeah. so gorgeous. Yeah, 
Yeah, I never make my plants green. They're always blue. <laughs> it's so, your som- thing. Sometimes they're green, but usually they're blue. Yeah. yeah. But I hope you learned something from this episode. And yes. this was somewhat um, useful or interesting to think about. Yes. And again, please hit us with your questions uh, by email or Instagram or... Yeah, that's wherever, <laughs> and let us know what you thought. We'd love yes. to hear feedback and stuff. Yes. <laughs> and show us your drawings if you join us to draw with us. Yes, We'd tag like us see. on Instagram in your stories and posts. Nice. <laughs> yes. But see you in the next episode. Yes. See you. Bye. Bye. Thank you for listening to the Drawing Club podcast. You can follow us on Instagram at Drawing Club Podcast or email us at drawingclubpodcast at gmail.com. You can also find me, Mia, on Instagram at mia.minerva and on YouTube as Mia Minerva. Sasha, where can we find you? I'm on Instagram at Sasha underscore Kretova. This podcast was created by us, Mia Minerva and Sasha Kretova. Olli Arni created the theme song and assisted with the recording and Dmitri Zerbin took care of audio mastering. Welcome to the club, friends.